Chapter 11. Once there was a boy. By this time, it was the end of season two, and I had nearly reached the end of adapting my stories from the Bad Goddess fanfiction series into video comic format. Basically, Charlie Day's Doctor What took the goddesses to a pizza hut in the Ralph Bakshi universe. A renaissance fair so authentic that they mistook it for medieval times, tricked everyone into thinking the BBC Doctor Who actors were regenerations of his own split-off doubles, and finally self-sacrificed himself to save Sayoko Mishima's life in a terrorist elevator bombing. He wakes up the next morning as Stephen Jeffrey's Doctor What. The goddesses trick him into hosting Scold's birthday party in a bowling alley from Fright Night Part 2 where he fights the Lost Boys. He then suffers a midlife crisis where the Nakoma game repeatedly prank him by demanding he take them on adventures to the bank or the local supermarket. Finally came the funniest episode, where the entire female cast hold a contest to see who can seduce Dr. Wet into bed with him. The winner will be crowned Empress of the North Pole. All that was left was the keys of Marinus storyline, and I wasn't sure that I really wanted to do it. It was a fun read on paper, but it's so goddamn meta that it just didn't seem like it would translate. I was ready to call it a day and give up on the series when my wife Angela received a phone call that her nephew Dylan Gutierrez committed suicide. I won't go into graphic details on this. I couldn't do it. I couldn't bear to be in that crazy environment again where the Velaro family would be attacking each other like a bunch of animals. I witnessed it before when Angela's grandmother fell into a life support coma and Carrie gave the go-ahead to pull the plug. It resulted in a family fist brawl at the hospital. This was Angela's deal and I would only be in the way. Instead, I stayed home as she took the family with her out of town and I put all my focus into making the cues of Marinus a reality over a straight time period of 48 hours. And honestly, this is how it should be done. Bad Goddess the Cues of Marinus is about Kevin from the Other Dimension being held hostage at gunpoint and forced to write a seven part chapter serial without taking the fingers off the keys at the cost of his life. The experiment revolves around where his mind would wander as I desperately tried to come up with ideas to keep the story going. The plot is about Dr. What, Er, Natsumi Sujimoto, and Otaki traveling around the five goddess planets to find the lost police officers of your under arrest, who were separated after the nuclear destruction of planet Earth in its rejected sequel. Did I really write this story in one shot? Hell no. I hit a case of writer's block 30 minutes in. And true to the rules of the story, my narrator character gets his brains blown out with a shotgun, wakes up in heaven, and has to finish the story from the afterlife. Sean Gunn guest stars as Dr. Wood as a nod to how John Hurt had got to be an official Doctor Who by playing the role one time in the 50th anniversary special. The running joke with Sean Gunn is whenever James Gunn had a dirty job for someone to do on the sets of his films, his response would be, fuck it, we'll just get Sean Gunn to do it. Sean Gunn is such a disrespected Dr. What that he only gets to play Dr. What one time because the other Dr. What actors are too busy and finds himself fired from the role 30 minutes into the movie in favor of bringing back gay porn actor Stephen Jeffries. That was the fan fiction version, but the death of Dylan Gutierrez brought on new changes to the video comic adaptation. This time around, it's implied that there would be no hostage situation. Kevin from the other dimension was schizophrenic and caught up in his own fantasy pulled the trigger on himself, committing suicide. As punishment for brutally mocking and flipping off God the entire series, his soul becomes trapped within the confines of his own story. Each goddess planet deals with a different theme relating to the job of its goddess. Number 1. Planet Be Beldandy is the present. It features an action sequence parody of the cab chase scene in The Fifth Element. The Cues of Marinus gang have to chase down the scooter mama on a hover cycle, unaware that she's carrying an EMP bomb that will wipe out all the flying cars in the general area, causing everyone to fall out of the skies to their deaths. The chase goes on with Otaki riding on top of the cab wearing a set of magnetic boots, fighting off attackers with a baseball bat. It's a great scene idea, there's just one problem. I had no way to visualize the action scene. The build-up dialogue is still featured in the movie, but the scene ends right before the action is supposed to start, as Kevin from the other dimension takes the shotgun blast to the head. Number 2. Planet Erd is the past. It is revealed that the reason all of the All My Goddess characters have become so volatile and offensive is because what have you been watching takes place inside Kevin from the other dimension's imagination, and his schizophrenic personalities that have been showcasing themselves on paper have been visualized as All My Goddess characters in video format. In an attempt to deal with his failed life, his imagination has co-opted the characters from his daughter's two favorite TV shows, Oh My Goddess and Doctor Who. The storyline falls back into his past memories of his struggles trying to raise a family in poverty. The story about the narrator reading Harlan Ellison's Angry Candy in the hospital is referenced as the book relates to the afterlife. Kevin knows that Harlan Ellison is infamously litigious about his work, but he's not heartless. 
Number three, Planet Skull is the future. There is a running joke in the movie that characters repeatedly brainstorm the ending, and then the story segment jumps ahead and shows us the ending in the middle of the movie. Finally, we get to the real ending, and there is no ending. The show is canceled before they can finish the movie. Dr. Wood is revealed to be Skuld's Dublet, but only demons are Dublet to goddesses. Dr. Wood is a former demon who abandoned his job, Hacti Grassle, and switched out his license, going on to run, thus creating a metaphor. Anyone can change their license. Anyone can change their life. Number four, Planet Pyorth is love. The characters sit in a circle and improvise a love story from person to person. As the story progresses, you suddenly realize the story that they think they are making up on the spot is really about the narrator who killed himself. Halfway through the story, the villain personality that tricked him into killing himself shows up and hijacks the story in an attempt to send his soul to hell. The keys of Meredith's gang are an allegory. They are the angels of judgment who have arrived in this place to decide the fate of the suicide victim. The scene ends with a memorial for Dylan Gutierrez. Number five, Planet Land is War. Once again, there is no final battle with the individual muse. The final battle is a discussion where the Oh My Goddess cast realized that after repeatedly name dropping the individual muse as the metaphorical villains the entire series, they don't really know what an individual me is and try to decipher what exactly Rod Serling meant when he wrote the Peter Sellers scene in the first place. Number six, Hot Off the Press. In the beginning of the movie, Dr. Watt states that Lloyd Kaufman's first Dr. Watt is important to the story and must be found at the Bad Goddess universes to be saved in the climax. Ironically, Lloyd Kaufman shows up after the movie is over, only to find himself battling the grammar Nazi, who has come to inflict harm on everyone over the terrible subtitling job that was done on this series. All of the annoying, unprofessional spelling and grammar errors from the original fan fiction series were left exactly as they were throughout the video comic series to set up this final payoff episode. Ironically, Lloyd Kaufman actually was important to the finale of the Keys of Marinus film as he saves the universe from being wiped out of existence. It just wasn't the ending that you were tricked into thinking it would be. During the making of this film, my daughter sent me messages on Twitter begging me to drive down there and pick her up from the funeral. The, <coughs> the fighting had gotten so bad that she had locked herself in the bathroom with her computer. There was nothing I could do to fix that situation. I explained to her what she was witnessing was the effects of how suicide can completely destroy a family. It's not just your life that you're taking, it's everyone else around you too. After completing the film over a period of 48 hours, I was unable to get a proper amount of sleep and went to work to, on the Zombie Life TV episode Brontosaurus Belly Dancing, which aired on the night of Dylan Gutierrez's funeral. The final episode that I worked on as a technical director was the one where Ali Boubois and Dr. Penrose were doing a dance number inspired by the film Reanimator set to a swing jazz version of Somebody That You Used To Know. Ali Boubois and Dr. Penrose got engaged during their final run on Zombie Life TV and recently got married as I am typing this article. Robert Cheney tried to get me a spot on the show one previous episode, but for all of Eddie Rotten's talk and support, he chose to bump me for a guest that had already been on the show several times. Gavin Stone and the producers hanging around the control booth can frequently be seen giving themselves cameos at the end of the Zombie Life TV episodes. I never got that chance because I had to man my station. The only video evidence of my existence are Jeffrey Lord's pre-show sure, pre-show sure videos he made for Facebook where you can see me pacing around the station waiting for the show to go on the air. As a side note, Robert Cheney is the one that took that evil looking photo of me in the control room that I used a hundred times over on Bad Goddess and Marler Gets a Spinoff. I took a few weeks off for what reason I do not remember. I came back for one last episode where our photographer Ben 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 was trying to run a trailer for his independent horror film. Ben 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 also volunteers for American Genre Film Archive at Alamo Drafthouse. Unfortunately, his episode didn't record that night, hence Gorefest was the final available episode of Zombie Life TV. So what happened next?